So you have a Christ presence and Jesus had a Christ presence. The difference between us and Jesus is that he was fully integrated with that Christ. Christ dwelled him in him bodily and so it is said of him that he was the Word incarnate. The same Word that was in the beginning by which we are created. Now that incarnation of the Word, we praise, we love, we honor, and we worship the light and the Word in him. But we recognize, as John said in that same first chapter of his Gospel, that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. God's light has ignited your being. That's why you can say, let your light shine. And the igniting of that light was the endowment of your being with a threefold flame that burns right now on the altar of your heart. About one sixteenth of an inch high, there is a spiritual flame that animates your temple. This is the great rejoicing. This is the great Alleluia, which means the mighty I Am Presence is come. That's what Alleluia means. It is a praise to the I Am that I Am. Now the chart shows within itself that violet flame blazing up all around you. It is the spiritual fire of the Holy Spirit promised in the Old Testament. And that violet transmuting flame is the dispensation of the everlasting gospel. It is the action that is for the seventh dispensation, what is called the New Age or the Aquarian Age. We are finishing the 2,000 year period of Jesus' mission. And this dispensation of the violet flame is for mercy, forgiveness, and transmutation. It has always been there. Jesus used it. The ancients used it. And all saints have known it, or they would not be saints. It is the purple light that you see in the aura of the saints. And it can fill your aura and bring joy to your being forever. The calling forth of the violet flame is one means whereby we access we access the spiritual light of our causal body. The causal body is like a computer of the mind of God. It contains within it the vastness of the all of creation. And you have a causal body above you. And the causal body is spoken of in the Bible. It says one star differeth from another star in glory. That means by your works in all of your lifetimes, by your words, by your emphasis, by your profession, your calling, how you spend your time, you are building those spheres of light, you are contributing to the great consciousness of God above you. Nothing you do for good is ever lost. No love is ever lost because love is always ultimately for the beloved Christ, even though we express that love toward one another. The joy of realizing that no endeavor that we engage in can ever be lost is a wondrous thing because sometimes plans go awry in life. Sometimes we don't quite finish what we started. But we have to understand that when we live for the glory of God, that energy we have expended in sincere effort and hard work, that ascends to that causal body. So you are building your mansion in heaven. You are building great houses of light above you. And therefore, realizing that you are on earth to be a co-creator with God gives you a personal sense of dignity, of reason for being. Why God so loved me that he sent his only begotten son, not alone in Jesus, but right present with me at all times. Jesus, the great avatar, which means the great incarnation of God, of the Piscean Age, does not suffer because you also have God in you. It in no way diminishes Jesus for you to realize the same Christ where you are. It does not diminish him, it enhances him that his followers finally have realized that he walked the earth that we could walk in his footsteps.